Hello and happy Wednesday. I hope everyone had a lovely Easter. Um, I went a little overboard. I'm not going to lie. Full transparency once again. Thursday, March 28th was my mother's 70th birthday. Saturday, March 30th was my 35th birthday. Sunday was Easter. So it was a whammy of a weekend for me. And I felt like dog shit today, which is Monday. Um, Even couldn't sleep well last night, had like weird cramps and just was so noticeable that my digestion was off. And as annoying and painful as it was, it is pretty cool to understand, right, that like your body really does adjust and show you that it likes whole foods water, movement, and all that. So it was definitely interesting um, getting myself back in it this week. And I also was talking to Coach Steph about this and my Coach Aram, right? How people eat how I ate on Friday through Sunday every day and probably worse. So my by me going off the wagon, right, on Friday, a great We went out to the diner for my mother's 70th because, you know, she's fancy and big time and really high maintenance. So for her big 70th celebration, she picked the local diner, Um, which makes sense if you know anything about her or me. And I had a Greek salad chicken wrap with no dressing and no olives. So I had the dressing on the side and then I got string beans instead of fries And I actually got another side of grilled chicken uh, just to make sure I hit my protein. So that was my diner meal, right? A Greek salad chicken wrap with string beans and chicken. And I used the side of dressing. I probably used one eighth of the little like shot container they gave me. So that was a pretty great meal to have out. I don't think many people order that when they go out to a diner. But again, it's eating out. It's different for me. That night, I did indulge in some rainbow cookie cheesecake. So we have this amazing diner. That's a lie. Uh, We have this amazing bakery by us in town called Manhattan Sweets. And I love everything rainbow or Italian cookie. So I sabotaged myself a little bit because I got my mom a Italian cookie cheesecake from there. So it was the three layer cookie with the jam and cheesecake on top. So I shouldn't have picked that because I knew I probably couldn't resist. And mom had a lot of dessert, so she sent me home with half of it. I did not put up a fight. And I definitely had like, you know, a serving of that. But that was my wild Friday, right? A Greek salad wrap. Saturday was my birthday. And my jerk friends, Lady and Cora, brought over bagels in the morning. And I love bagels. I have an empty pit of a stomach when it comes to bagels. I will never go to a bagel store and get a bagel. I honestly don't think I've done that. I could probably count on one hand how many times I've like driven to a bagel store and gotten a bagel. It's usually for like, if I'm going to someone's house, I'll stop. But I I have never personally just gotten myself a bagel. Um, But they brought them over. And then my lovely neighbor who is like, basically a chef um, brought over homemade sourdough bagels. So that day chuckled on and I had about like two and a half full bagels because I had one of the smaller sourdough bagels. I had a full everything bagel from Lady and Cora. So that's like one and a half or like one and three quarters. And then I had another half of an everything bagel for lunch. So I had plenty of bagels, but each one had a protein on it. I had turkey on one and eggs on the other. And then... We went out to dinner at a fun Italian place. We started off with a pizza as an appetizer, but there was eight of us. So we each had one slice. It was thin slice. So one thin slice margarita. And then I got chicken marsala, which is pretty heavy in fat, but it's a chicken, not just a pasta dish. And we got no dessert and no drinks. So again, very different for me, but also probably a very healthy option in a lot of people's eyes. And then we went back to our house and my lovely husband nailed it and got me a chocolate raspberry ice cream cake from our local ice cream store, like homemade 
And I had probably like one and a half servings of that. And I had to like remove myself from the uh, kitchen because it's like my favorite. Um, that's going to be in our freezer for a long time. So I'm definitely going to have that a lot. But that was that, right? My birthday. There you go. And then Sunday was Easter and I love brunch, right? I would choose Easter brunch over Thanksgiving food any day. Don't get me wrong. I house Thanksgiving food too. But if I had to choose, I would choose Easter brunch. So once again, 1130 rolls around. I did fast until Easter brunch, but I had a whole bagel with a ton of eggs on it. And those eggs were not egg whites and they actually had cheese on them. So cheesy eggs with bacon. Um, so I made myself like a little egg sandwich. I grabbed a half to start, but obviously I went back for the other half. Um, there was a little bit of chicken salad and egg salad. I had like a spoonful of each of that. And there was a, this jelly donut creation. I love jelly donuts. Um, it wasn't like a Dunkin' Donuts jelly donut where like just the middle was stuffed. It was like cut in half, like a sandwich, right? Sliced in half, like top to bottom, not up um, left and right. And it was like fried, I guess, the donut because the outside was super crispy with sugar on it. And the whole thing was jelly. It was like a jelly sandwich, honestly. That's probably what they called it. And I had half of that and it was so good. But then the rest of the day, I just made ground chicken, uh, like a taco salad. And that was it. Oh, that's a lie. And then I had another piece of that cheesecake and then I had to throw it out. But I basically finished it also. I made myself look like a hero by throwing the rest out. And the rest, if I did air quotes, was about like two spoonfuls. So I was no hero. But all in all, like if I wrote those meals down, people would probably be like, wow, like you have a lot of self-restraint or you did a really good job eating out. Like da 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 da. And that was probably three of the worst days I've had since September. And that shows, right? That consistency is so important. And I weighed myself on Saturday morning. I was 151. And on Saturday night, I was 159. Now, that doesn't get me nervous or upset. I knew that was going to happen. I sometimes think it's funny how much I can fluctuate. And then even this morning, so Monday morning, I was 152, which makes sense, right? I definitely overate this weekend, but I was one pound heavier from my like normal weight. And again, it's because I made sure I got 10,000 steps. I didn't work out Saturday and Sunday, um, but I walked a lot. I still prioritize protein and I'm consistent most of the time. So you can have days like that. It's just, you can't have them all the time. You can even have a weekend like that. But those three days were again, probably my wildest three days since like the summer. Um, and I really don't love how I felt like, I did love it in the moment. Don't get me wrong. Like last night when I was eating that cheesecake, I went back for another bite and I knew it was send me over the edge, but I wanted it and I did it. Um, but again, like that's out of the house now and I'll go back to normal, but just wanted to make everyone understand. Like I'm just like you guys in the sense that I eat the pizza. I eat the cheesecake. Everyone looks at me sometimes. They're like, Oh, like, do you ever eat pizza or like, when's the last time you've had a bagel? Or like, how many times do you let yourself cheat? Like I'm on some kind of pedestal. I out eat 99% of you guys, right? It's just that I move more. Me out eating is wholer, wholer, is that a word? Better foods, right? And I do let myself have pizza. And if people bring bagels over, I do eat them. I just don't go and search for them. I don't put them in my lap because I know that my willpower will not win. Um, so that was my weekend. 35 years young, and it was awesome. Uh, it was nice just going with the family and hanging with friends and not going to a bar and landing in Taco Bell at 1 a.m., which I usually do. Um, but it was a good weekend. And I've decided that I think for this podcast and more of the future ones, I'm going to keep them shorter, right? I do like my long educational ones every once in a while. But to be honest, right, I don't really have 45 to 50 minutes to escape in a quiet place every week. Um, and it's becoming like super stressful to try and fit in long podcasts in a quiet house. So either have to make myself an office with soundproof walls or I don't know. But I think the shorter ones, you know, they're a little bit more realistic to listen to drive to work. They're a little bit more impactful. And I like like 26, 27 minute ones. So 
I think you guys will too. So now that I went over my weekend and all that I ate, I want to get into today's topic, which is workouts. And I know that's super general and you're probably like, you're going to talk about the whole scheme of workouts in 26 minutes. Like what? Um, and no, I want to talk about why bodybuilding is so great and why we have to trust the process a little bit more and steer ourselves away from these boot camps. And why I decided to talk about this this week is because throughout the week, a lot of little signs brought themselves up that was like, okay, this is going to be a good topic. And one of those signs was even today when one of our clients texted us saying, I'm going to join F45 again because I sweat more. So I'm getting a better workout and I'm just not sweating as much in the gym. I almost fucking died. Like, what? Have you learned nothing with us? Like, I know you haven't been with us for a while and you're not the most invested client, but because you sweat more, why join F45? Just go buy a sauna in your backyard, right? So it's things like this that make me really want to educate people more. So let's start there. Sweating has absolutely nothing to do with how good your workout is. It has everything to do with how hot the room is, how hydrated you are. And that's pretty much it, right? Go to hot yoga, sit in there for 40 minutes. I bet you're real sweaty. Bet you didn't really burn any calories. Obviously, you know, like Bikram Vinyasa, different story, but you could just sit in that room. Go sit in the sauna for 30 minutes. You're going to be really sweaty. You didn't burn any calories extra, right? So stop thinking that sweating and like huffing and puffing means you're getting this great workout. It's not true. It's hot and you're seeing water come out. That's it. Nothing to do with a good workout. Other things, right? Clients have been saying like, oh, wow, like I'm shocked that I burned 300 calories while doing a leg day. I didn't think that was possible. And even though I'm glad that they like were happy to see a burn on leg day when they didn't think lifting was pot, like lifting heavy created caloric burn, your smartwatch has no clue how many calories you burn during a workout, right? It can track your heart rate, but it doesn't know your body composition. It doesn't know the intensity of what you're lifting. It has no idea. Do not listen to it. It's not right. And also the amount of calories you burn in the moment is probably the smallest thing of importance in a workout, right? Your workout's one hour long. Would you rather burn more calories in one hour or more calories in 24 hours? So stop relying on your smartwatch to tell you how many calories you burned. I know it's addictive. I know you think it's right. You know, the orange series splat points and your Apple watch and all that. I get it. It's data. It means nothing. Okay. I worked out at Orange Theory for a long time. I coached at Orange Theory. I, in about over a year, I think I totaled four fucking splat points in a year. And guess what? I was probably one of the most fit people in that room, running at 12 miles per hour on the treadmill, maxing out the dumbbells, winning the rowing races, not breaking into that splat point threshold. It means nothing. Okay. It's just about basically if you're unfit, you get splat points. So another thing, not important. And then I made this analogy the other day to one of my uh, potential clients that now is a client, which is really awesome, when explaining bodybuilding and why it's so good for you. So think about if you had a really long driveway, right? And it's a mile long and it's the middle of winter and it just was a big snowstorm. When you're coming home from work, you're going to take a certain path from the street to your front door in your car. You're going to leave the next day. When you come home, right, and the snow's still there, are you going to take a totally different path to your front door? Or are you going to drive down the same tracks that you made the day before because there's a little bit of indentation, it's a little bit smoother, whatnot, right? You go to work the next day. You come home, the snow's still there. Are you going to once again take a whole different path and go through fresh snow? Or are you going to continue down the same path you made for the past two days with even more indentation, right? Any sane person is going to take the path that was already indented, that already had a safe way to the front door, that already packed down the snow, that already had definition. 
And that's what bodybuilding is, right? Like you're doing the same workouts every week for 10 to 16 weeks long. You are focusing on that exact muscle pattern, that exact muscle movement over and over again, challenging it, making it harder, making it grow. Fitness classes, boot camp classes are the opposite. That would be like the driver going zigzag to their front door. And then the next day, doing another weird zigzag pattern and constantly going through fresh snow with no traction, causing no indentation, no definition, right? So constantly doing different movements does not provide for muscle growth as well as repetition movements. So even if F45 or Orange Theory or Bobby's Boot Camp or something does leg day every Monday, unless you are doing the same movements every Monday, you are not getting optimal workouts. Now, I'm not saying they're useless. They're not. But you're choosing a worse method. You're choosing a harder method to get muscle. You're choosing a slower process to get muscle. I don't know about you guys, but slower, even though I do preach it a lot, right? We don't have time for slower. If you tell me I can get more definition in my quads in 12 weeks or in one year, I'm going to pick the method that's 12 weeks. So that's why you see a lot of these boot camp class, uh, fitness class people plateau, right? When they first go in, they lose some weight, they get some muscle because they're moving and they're lifting weight that they never really had before. But look at the people that have been there for a year, for two years. They very much look the same after month six. There's no real extra muscle definition. There's no, you know, change in appearance because they're limiting themselves. They're constantly choosing these new pathways. So they're not growing the muscles. And I get it may be fun and it may be cheery and woohoo camaraderie. But is that is that why you work out or do you want to see results in your body? All right. If you had to pick, I want to have a workout friend or I want to lose two jean sizes. What do you actually want? If you want to lose two jean sizes, then say goodbye to Susie and Karen and go to a gym for a little bit. See what happens. See the difference. Um, I actually heard on this podcast not too long ago that my coach Aram had, and I forget the guest's name, but he he had a g- good analogy that fitness classes are like a gateway drug, right? It's the way to get someone who doesn't work out at all to work out, aka someone who doesn't do drugs to do their first drug, right? It's like the weed. Um, it gets people in, gets people liking movement. It gets people interested in moving and working out again. but We eventually need to graduate to the good stuff, the hard stuff, to get that fix, to get that feel, to get that high, aka muscle definition. You need to move on, right? So maybe from the fitness classes, then you go to like a smaller group class, like a four or six people circuit training, which is still eh, right? And then from there, you really crack into the hard stuff of bodybuilding. And that's when you're going to see the biggest physique changes. It's just proven. It's You can't really mess with it. And I have pictures of myself in my orange theory days, my CrossFit days, and my bodybuilding days. And I am way happier with how I look in my bodybuilding days. My body fat is lower. My inches are smaller. And honestly, my body is probably healthier because it's not as like, like not intense. It surely is fucking intense. Don't get me wrong. But the pounding, there's rest involved. It's a lot more forgiving and it's a lot more doable as a mom. Right. If you work out from home, you go hard for six squats. What does that take? 30, 40 seconds. And then you can give yourself up to a four or five minute rest if you really need it. That's changing diapers. That's changing channels. That's doing things. In a CrossFit workout or a HIIT class, the clock doesn't stop for a dirty diaper. Right. Like these are way doable at home. Um, So that's just kind of my pitch 
to why bodybuilding works. It's not only like the best method, but it shows you the best results. And I really wish more people would dive into it, give it a try. I know gyms can be a little intimidating. Most of the time, everyone's really nice at gyms. Like, You're surrounded by people that want to get better, right? You don't just walk in and like people aren't just dicks to you. That's not true. Maybe you see that on like social media, but that's not the case. I've never once met like a nasty person at a gym and I've been to plenty. Um, And again, you can do a lot at home, but you need heavy weights. If you're lifting a weight that is lighter than your child, something is wrong, right? If you're lifting a weight that is lighter than your grocery bags, something is wrong. And then one other point I want to make, right, because I see a lot of my clients making this mistake, right, with rep schemes. So if you ever do work with a trainer or someone who programs wits for you, or you do even follow like beach body classes and stuff, and they're like, okay, 12 squats, or I, I program for you and it says 12 squats. If you get to number 12, right, you don't just stop. Rep, rep schemes are there for almost just like guidance on the weight to use. So if you get to the end of the rep, like 12, and you still have energy left, you need to keep going to 15, to 20, to 25, if that's what it is. All that teaches you is that you picked a weight that was way too light. Then you put the dumbbells down and you pick up double the weight. Now you're getting closer to rep 12 and not having energy left. So you don't need to follow a rep scheme, tooth and nail, hard line. Like, oh, coach said 10. I only can do 10. If you you picked a weight that you can do 50, well, sister, you're doing 50. Now, when you're done with those 50, readjust the weight you pick so you can get closer to 10. Okay, so don't just stop because that's what the rep says. Keep going until you hit that 9, 10 RPE. And then reassess the weight you pick to get closer to that rep number. All right, but that's just a, that's for something that's already training, but just something I wanted to mention. Um, but that's again, that's kind of really it. I'm keeping it short and sweet, and hopefully, hearing why I kind of preach against fitness classes, it makes sense. Um, and again, I know they're convenient. They're 60 minutes. You're told what to do, but you have to assess what you really want. If you really want to change, if you really want to lose inches, if you really want to get toned and see muscles and lose body fat, you might have to ditch the fitness classes and your pals for a little bit and get into some real strength training. Oh, and the last thing, I was talking to a potential client this weekend and it grinded my gear so much. And obviously me and this client did not match. So uh, they were not a good fit for us. So I easily let them go. Right. But she was part of a boot camp, And then I was like, okay, what, what are your thoughts on going to a gym? Like, are you open-minded so we can do some real strength training? And her response was, oh, we do real strength training. Obviously in the back of my head, I rolled my eyes. I didn't do this on the zoom. Right. And I was like, oh, tell me more about that. And she was like, yeah, we do like, you know, 60 seconds of as many squats as you can. And I was like, okay do you hold weight? She's like, yeah, I hold like, you know, like 25 pound dumbbells. So we do real strength training. And I was just like cringing on the inside. That is not real strength training, right? That's just like muscle fatigue a little bit. That is lightweight. That is a, another way of a boot camp, just pretending they strength train, right? Who knows what your squat looks like? There's probably 20 people in that class with one coach. That is not strength training. Even Orange Theory, who labels their strength classes, strength classes, not true strength training. Because guess what? I said before, right? You are not doing the same lifts every time you go. Therefore, you are losing out on hypertrophy, aka muscle growth. Unless it is a program that does the same workouts for 12 weeks with heavy weight, it is not true strength training. And I'm sorry if I'm ruffling feathers, but that's just it. It's basic science. One plus one equals two. That's what strength training is. Um, yeah. So again, there's there's aspects of it in places. Like CrossFit does have strength training, obviously. There's some of the CrossFit athletes are strong as fuck. Um, and they do strength training like as an accessory to their wads. 
That's strength training. Yes. Okay. Um, so there's aspects of that in the CrossFit world. The Metcons though, not strength training. That's weighted cardio. And another thing we kind of have to decipher. So that is that for today. I hear people in my house. I am not sure who that would be. Um, interesting. So kids are with my husband at the gym, but maybe I should go down there. Hopefully you guys hear from me next Wednesday and it wasn't a robber, but have a really awesome week. Please reach out to me if you guys ever have any questions about working out and nutrition. Again, my DMs are always open. I'm very responsive. Again, I don't have a ginormous following, so it's me. I'm answering. I love to teach. I don't hide information because you're not a client. I will gladly give you anything you want to hear, anything you want to know, because the information is out there on Google. I'm not a secret. It's the accountability and the camaraderie and the community that I create that's so great. So please ask me, reach out, audit yourself. What are you doing? Is it right for you? Should you try something else? And the last point I want to make with workouts, right? Nutrition is key. If your nutrition does not match your efforts in the gym, you will not see change. Simple. Okay. Have an awesome day. Everyone start your April calendars, right? Check off. If you hit your nutrition, if you hit your workouts, let's audit our uh, consistency and our adherence. We have 13 weeks till June 1st. That is a lie. July 1st. I cannot wait for summer. Sun. I even got a little bit of a tan on Easter. Yes. Thank God. I need it. And have an awesome day. Keep showing up. Live A minus.